Hello and welcome to this another week of our online lecture on multimedia and this is uh, the fifth week I guess and uh, in this week we'll be starting on digital audio and audio compression. So uh, first you know, let's see what are the outlines. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. Uh, so uh, you know mostly we'll be talking on you know the digitalization of sound so that means you know digital audio uh, and uh, the concept is uh, sampling quantizations and Nyquist rate or Nyquist theorem so and probably some of the things you know will be overlapped that we you know uh, understood earlier uh, but you know to contextualize our understanding with respect to audio uh, topic, so we need to recap some of these things, and you know signal to noise ratio, dB scale, and uh, how to do you know sound measurement, and we will see uh, audio quality and data rate calculations, and very briefly we'll see the concept of MIDI and what do we mean by transmission of audio, and so these are you know the basics of uh, you know, audio, and then. In the second part, we'll be learning on audio compression. So, what is sound? You know, uh, let's we understand digitize digitization of sound. So, so first of all, what is sound? Sound, you know, kind of you know wave phenomenon like light, but sound is more macroscopic, and it basically involves you know how. Uh, air pressure compressed and expanded under the action of some physical devices. So for example, if we uh, look at the speaker in audio systems, you know, inside the speaker there are some systems, right, that vibrates back and forth and it produces some longitudinal, you know, pressure wave. So that eventually reaches to our human you know, listening system, that is our air systems, and we perceive that as a sound. So and and because sound is a pressure wave, so it basically can take continuous values, not any digitized ones, right? So, uh, for example, it's not in this pattern, not in this pattern. Uh, so because sound is coming like this way, right? It's a continuous in nature, so continuous with respect to time. Con no, it, this is called you know discrete. So definitely the sound is coming continuous in a continuous fashion. So, so that's why we say that naturally uh, the source is analog now to process this sound to store the sound and to take various kinds of other advantages we need to convert this sound to a digital formation and digital formation is very much similar that we you know described earlier if you remember that and go back our lectures and you will know that so but as it is, you know, the sound wave also, you know, uh, sees reflection, that is bouncing, refraction, for example, angle change when entering certain media, and it has some diffraction, so that kind of things, right? So let's we understand, you know, the presentation of time, a, a sound. So this is how sound looks like, right? Definitely, I mean, the more appropriate is sound looks like, you know, this one, right? As time goes, as time goes on, so the amplitude changes and it goes down, up, and variation with respect to time. So let's say very tiny segment of that signal is look like this one. So if we see that, you know, we has this time and this is the amplitude. You know, perhaps let's say at a very certain time, you know, this is the amplitude of our sound. Or let's say at other time, you know, maybe this is the amplitude of our sign of our sound, right? So. Uh, then you see uh, digitization means that conversion to a stream of numbers right so because numbers are you know more efficient you know and maybe you know in integers number or something so this is one dimensional sound so now can you imagine or can you think of that how we can convert these things into digitalization so you already know and the, the, the uh, process is very simple there are only two stages the first step is you know you do the sampling so for example you know this is our time this is our time and this is our you know you know sound signal let's say so what we very first things we do we need to you know sample 
at this point 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 and in this way so periodically because you see this is a continuous in time so so we can't consider this signal at every instant of time rather at a certain uh, instance for example at this point at this point at this point we will record our what is the sound level at this point what is the sound you know you know amplitude at this point what is the sound amplitude at this point right so we will consider only at this time period so this periodical you know time is we call sampling so sampling sampling over time dimension now the similar things we need to do you know this sorts of sampling over amplitude dimensions also see this one is our sampling across time but this one is sampling across amplitude dimension because you know uh, you know uh, in the time in the amplitude domain we can also consider you know from let's say from a minus from from zero to let's say one volt something definitely we can consider infinite you know level right but you know as i explained earlier you also know that we will consider a certain number of levels because we don't need each possible levels so let's say you you, you might consider four levels eight levels 16 levels and so on so that means you see in ampl across amplitude dimension we also do some sort of sampling so this is so then 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 let's say any sound levels that comes in this range will will consider either zero or maybe this level right so this is called quantization or level are quantized we already know so we do the sampling across time domain and we do uh, the quantization across amplitude domain so that's the idea so this sampling plus quantizations we say this is called adc that is analog to digital conversion okay so the typical sampling rate that we do in um in in audio signal processing is generally 8 to 48 kilohertz so that means per second in every second how many of these samples we have you know it might be you know 8 you know 8 kilohertz to you know we say 48 kilohertz or simply 48000 samples samples per second or 8000 you know samples per second okay so this is the sampling rate usually do you know but how many samples actually we can do there is a theory called you know nyquist theorem okay now we will briefly see what we mean by nyquist theorem okay so definitely you know um you know uh, if we if, let's say you know this is our signal let's say this is our signal now if we say let's say sampling means let's say here we do one sampling and let's say here we do one sampling and let's say here we do another sampling and here we do another sampling let's say we let's say this is one second signal and we perform you know four different samples now can we recover our original signal you know by using only these four samples the answer is no because i mean only this point and this point and this point and only this point least four point how we can understand the shape will be you know look like you know this one right we can't so that's why you know there is some system that how many samples at least we need to have so uh, there was a scientist you know uh, and and he actually did this kind of things and according to uh, we say this is you know nyquist theorem now to understand this nyquist theorem let's say we we see this one we already know the what is this mean you know these slides but you know let's we explain these things you know once more so what this says is you know any signals you know it can be decomposed into some sum of sinusoids for example let's say this is a fundamental frequency let's say this one maybe its frequency is, is somewhat maybe any af okay any any frequency maybe f is 50 hertz or maybe one kilohertz something like that any hertz okay and now let's say what you do is let's say we double this frequency so this this is a double frequency and we you know uh take this you know amplitude you know some you know we make this amplitude you know half okay, okay? so for example here is the amplitude from here to here maybe let's say you know maybe two volt or something so let's say we we take you know half of this amplitude so first of all what we do we we just double the frequency and we make the 
uh, amplitude you know reduced to 50 percent so this is what it means so that means what we do is we just take this signal as it is then in addition to that we add you know we just you know increase the frequency to twice and then we make their amplitude half then if we just add up this together it, so this then this frequency this signal is look like this one okay now if you just add up these two together let's say this one and this one it will be looking like this one okay now let's say we now you know a threefold i mean we, we we multiply or this frequency by three and we make its amplitude let's say you know 33 percent and it will be look like this one and if we do that and let's we add all these three together and it will be look like this one in this way let's say we go up to let's say we you know make the fundamental frequency four times and the amplitude again let's say 50 percent of this one and this is this one okay it looks like this one now if we just you know add all of this signal together it will be looking like this one right so what i mean is that we can you know generate a very complex signal just by you know by doing this you know weighted sinusoids that means let's say we just it starts with any frequency let's say this frequency let's say this is the fundamental frequency and we we, we have a signal like say cos 2 pi fct and let's say we just multiply with cos 2 pi maybe twice fc okay 2 by twice fc and its amplitude may be half. And then let's say another is half cos twice pi thrice fc, and maybe this one is one third plus in this way. So whatever. So this is the fundamental frequency. Now and this is called harmonics because you know this frequency is the uh, double of this. This frequency is the double of this. Whatever. So if we just you know manipulate in this way, if we just increase this frequency or decrease this frequency and if we just you know take a different amplitude for example here is weighted by half weighted by one third and in this way or maybe weighted by two three something then we can fairly generate any any kinds of signal that we want or in another words you know when we look you know this kinds of you know let's say audio frequency if we if we analyze this frequency we will we will have a minimum frequency or say fundamental frequency and we will also have a maximum frequency for example let's say 4f or 5f something let's say this minimum frequency is 100 hertz and this maximum frequency is let's say 1000 hertz okay 1000 hertz so what is the what is the differences in frequency in this signal the differences is you know maximum frequency minus minimum frequency let's say this is let's say thousand hertz and this is 100 hertz so 900 hertz is basically the bandwidth of this signal okay so any signal for example let's say this is our audio signal this is generally our audio signal the any signals that we can see it will have a maximum signal and generally if it is an audio signal you know maximum signal will be something like you know generally you know 20 kilohertz or something that means 20,000 hertz and the minimum signal is maybe 20 hertz, 40 hertz, 50 hertz, whatever it is. Now if you just subtract that you know, minimum frequency from the maximum frequency, then you will be getting the bandwidth of the signal. Okay. Now the Nyquist you know, theorem, it says that if you have a signal, if you have a signal, then if you want to reconstruct the signal correctly after sampling, then your sampling rate should be at least twice of the bandwidth of this signal. For example, if the bandwidth of this signal is this one, then what we'll have to do at least the sampling rate should be twice multiplied by its bandwidth. Okay, so so that means so so the example that we had, uh, for example, you know, if nine nine hundred hertz our you know bandwidth, so definitely at least the sampling rate should be you know eighteen hundred samples per second okay so this is how we'll have to calculate if we don't have then we can't reconstruct the original signal you know from the sampled signal okay so here is another example let's see speech signal you know if if a speech signal you know sampled at you know i don't know what is this 22 kilohertz that means 22,050 hertz uh, the highest frequency that we can expect to be present in that sample signal is this one okay so this is i mean 
the opposite of the uh, the the problem that we saw right if we if we if we you know if we sample our signal with this you know rate that is in every second we do 22050 samples then we can expect the highest signal that you know in in that signal the highest frequency in that signal is basically half of that so that is that is the same things uh, that you know we explain according to theory right right so sampling rate should be at least twice that you just you know do these samples so here 2 f2 minus f1 so this means you know maximum frequency and this means the minimum frequency in the signal okay so we'll have to maintain this nyquist you know rate when we do this sampling so that means this one okay so okay now let's go forward now if you remember that you know the quantizations for example let's say this is our analog signal and this has a minimum range and this has a maximum range and how many levels we want let's say eight level we want so we can um, you know we can just you know assign the, that level right let's say this is the first level it is you know zero 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 because there are eight levels so eight levels mean you know i mean many times we say so and even we'll say more so eight levels means uh, we we have two to the power three equal eight so that means three bits we need to you know assign uh, to represent is sample or is level okay so zero 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 and this one is level one 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 okay so generally how do we calculate then i showed you that you know so what are, what are these step size if let's say in analog range in in analog voltage let's say this is the maximum voltage and this is the minimum voltage so then you have maximum minus minimum then you divide it by number of levels so that would be your step size and what is the number of levels or number of steps step 2 to the power n so this n you know if you if it depends on you that how many levels you want if you want eight levels so that means 2 to the power n mean 8 so in that case n equal 3 so if you want 32 levels so that means 2 to the power n is 32 so and then you know number of bits for each levels to represent we need you know five bits right so so this this bit this is we say you know adc you know let's say five bit adc okay that, that we say five bit adc if this n is three we say three bit adc so that means for each sample when we when we do this kind of things for example you know at each at each samples at each sample what is this you know quantized value so to represent this quantized value we need five bit for each samples so that what it means okay you know i explained these things so if we do so so that means this is the formula that we get is step size equal to v max minus v min divided by number of steps and and also you know that what is the quantization error quantization error will be you know uh, 50 percent of the step size in the worst case situation or in other words you know if we take you know v max minus v mean that means the range of and then you divide it by you know number of steps and then you take half of that so that means v max minus v mean divided by 2 to the power n plus 1 so this is your quantization error possible we already saw these things but here i just you know explain again okay so what is this mm, okay I don't know so okay okay here it is so 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 let's uh, take uh, another example here right let's say uh, you know and in our signals that uniform distributed you know from minus one volt to plus one volt and we like to quantize it using three bit adc so what is this step size so it is you know very simple right you know that is that we we had you know this sorts of calculation before so that means the maximum voltage is plus one voltage minus the minimum voltage is minus one voltage so and then you just you know divide by three bit adc so the number of steps is two to the power three so and as such 
so if you just calculate so this is this volt right so step size is 0 0.25 volt and what is the quantization error so quantization error will be half of that so that is 0 0.125 this is exactly this one right you can read it okay so now the questions ultimately comes or understanding you know landing on this conclusion that to decide you know that how we do the you know uh, you know digitized audio so we need this sorts of you know conclusion that what is the sampling rate uh, so definitely if your sampling rate is high your sound quality will be definitely high and um, uh, the more samples you take in every second so it means the more you know you know original signals you are going to store but it will take you know your more stories and more processing time and how finely the data to be quantized so that means in amplitude level how finely you know how many levels we will have if we have more levels definitely the sound quality will be great but you know it will be taking you know much more stories and more time more computations those things and what are the file formats that we'll be using for this audio data so based on this concept you know we'll uh, see that how to calculate our you know data rate uh, let's we, uh, we, we let's we go there you know fast okay uh, say here okay so and then we'll be coming back our other understanding see here uh, for example you know uh, quality let's say telephone quality data so telephone quality data it uses you know 8 kilohertz sample rate sampling rate so that means 8000 samples so that means 8000 samples samples per second okay and then what is this next one is beats per sample definitely uh, at each sample for example you know that we, we, we understand that this is in our let's say signal and in this axis this is the amplitude and this is the time right let's say at this particular sample we are talking about and 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 this is our you know let's say this let's say this this amplitude this is the quantized level so uh, so how many beats we need to represent this is sample right so th this is this one okay so generally you know um, I mean a very you know usual things that at least 256 different levels we consider you know in in every you know possible you know number of levels that we consider if 256 different levels we consider so in quantization level so at least eight bits we need and uh, it even um, might need even more you know for example some sophisticated systems for example dvd quality or maybe audio quality you know it's not only eight bit we might need even 48 bit 192 bit something like that for each samples that means so finely quantized right okay so now let's say in telephone quality then you have you know eight you know beats per sample okay eight bits per sample and then so this is this one so that means let's say we are trying to calculate that what is the data rate at every seconds okay so that means you see eight thousand samples per second and in each samples we have eight bits and then let's say our you know channel is mono channel mono channel means not a single channel so that means single channel means just you multiplied by one if you have a stereo so then you will multiply by two and if it is you know even you know six channel or even more you just multiply with that number of channel and then so this is your data rate that you, what you have right now see uh, what what is the data rate then Th see you know these samples and these samples eliminate out so that means 8000 multiplied by 8 divided by you know is per second because there is nothing you know in the numerators right so this is per second now this is you know in 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 this is in kilo that means 8 a this is already in a, you know a simple number not in kilohertz so we can say you know 8 multiplied by 8 so how about you know this is this is basically bits per second these bits are there now how about if we just multiply you know this one by 8 so that means it become bytes per second so that means this one so ultimately this is 8000 
you know bytes per second or in another words you can say 8 you know kilobytes per second right 8 kilobyte per second now here you see this kilo this kilo means you know thousand you know this thousand this, this means thousand bits equal one kilobit okay don't be confused with the storage so this is the data rate not the storage because it is the data rate we basically you know think about you know just thousand otherwise you know you need you know to divide by 1024 okay so that is that is a different thing generally 1000 divide 1024 sometimes we represent a big k and simple 1000 we represent by a small k okay anyway so so this is 8 kilobyte per second is exactly this one you see 8 kilobyte this data rate is 8 kilobyte per second now definitely this is uncompressed data if you compressed it it will be reduced so we are not talking about the compression now 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 how about if you have you know let's say um let's say a cd quality cd quality data in cd quality the sample rate is some something like this 44.44.1 kilohertz okay then you multiplied by you know 16 bits per samples 16 bit per samples then you multiplied by you know number of channels you know because it is stereo so that is two so if you just calculate this one then you will be having you know 176 point you know 4 kilobyte per second now now can you can you see the differences when you talk on the telephone your data rate in every second is basically you know 8 kilobyte so that means your communication channel or your application software it need to support at least 8 kilobyte per second but if you play you know cd signals then your data rate should be 176 kilobyte per second now how about dvd audio quality dvd audio quality even is 1200 kilobyte per second so and so compared to so if you just compare for example you know the cd quality and telephone quality see what how much you know the data rate and data you need compared to your telephone signal so this is how right and 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 now in this modern age we even needs much more finer quality so uh, and and this is in every second right so compared to this is a huge differences so this is how we do that if you like the better quality so uh, that means the data rate should be high but at the same time, your communication cost, your you know processing, computation, all will be high. So we need to compromise between the data quality, audio quality, and your data rate. Okay. So uh, this is you know generally and the things. So but you know th there is another information in this table that says that in telephone generally you know operate in this range telephone communications, whereas in FM radio, AM radio, so these are the frequency. Okay. And uh, definitely we need some encoding techniques you know to compress and do some other kind of things or before transmission so that is a different thing we are not you know uh, discussing that one here okay now let's uh, we can go back to our you know other concept that we had here the one concept that we you know, like to understand is you know SNR you know that what is SNR is SNR is basically you know signal to noise ratio that is signal power divided by noise power and we saw this kind of thing the signal power divided by noise power right and and this is basically signal power and this is noise power you know how to calculate these things but how about you know we can actually think like this this, this is our signal one two three and something you know in data in computer we say this is a sequence of numbers but in signal processing in electronics you know we represent these things like this one that you know maybe at every point this is maybe one at this point maybe two at this point maybe three so these are you know with a signal or we can say this is maybe you know more appropriately you know voltage okay we, we say signal level signal amplitude or signal voltage so this is very much the same thing this data sequence is basically amplitude or we can say signal level or say simple voltage let's say v signal we say v signal that means voltage signal or amplitude of the signal if we take a square of that it become power okay so so you know the snr is you know signal power that means you just take the square of the signal amplitude and square of the noise amplitude now if you just take this you know 
square here for example you know let's see if you think about like this snr basically your uh, signal you know power divided by noise power you know just just in another form and if you just convert into dv so it become 10 log 10 right you know these things so we can represent these things like this one log 10 let's say vs divided by vn this is square now you can take this square here so it becomes now 20 log 10 you know vs divided by vn so that means you can uh, consider that you know signal power divided by noise power so, so signal power divided by noise power at that time you just multiply it by 10 and if you consider only voltage or amplitude you, you you are not considering this square so at the time you multiply it by 20 so the base i mean the, uh, this one right so this is you know when you uh, you know calculate the snr uh, in terms of db or decibel okay so if you if you consider the signal level by noise level so then you multiply by 20 and if you think the you know, power level by noise power then you multiply it by 10 it's basically the same because this square is coming here in case of signal okay now now interesting thing is uh, that i told you and you know that you know when we do the quantizations uh, i mean uh, more appropriately digitizations so the quantizations you know in every sample there is some uh, some noise that is called quantize quantization error right or quantization noise more appropriately so you know I mean, there are, there are many kinds of noise, you know, if you study only noise, you can do a PhD degree on that. But let's, you know, say that there are many kinds of noise, quantization noise is one of them. Now, when you measure only the quantization noise, we can say something like signal to quantization noise ratio, signal to quantization noise ratio. Uh, in general, if you say in general noise, so and you don't differentiate between noise, any noise, so then it's a signal to noise ratio but when you consider only quantization noise sometimes we say this is the metric that is called signal to quantization noise ratio so there are you know various calculations that how we you know uh, can uh, calculate and measure uh, the signal to quantization noise ratio but you don't need to know that just you know that signal to quantization noise ratio uh, we, we generally represent in this way that is 6.02 n plus 1.76 and that basically in db db scale what is this n this n basically says that uh, your uh, you know your your adc you know length or how many samples you how many bits you assign for every samples so it might be 3 bit 5 bit you know but generally you know 8 bit or 16 bit or 32 bit i mean something like that right you know that so so as you increase this bit, uh, so that means that that means as you increase the number of levels, so this means this one, right? So as you increase the number of levels uh, to during the quantizations, so that means that more smoother amplitude you are considering, the more fine levels of quantization level you are considering. So at that time, definitely quantization noise uh, will be reduced, right? Because quantization noise will be reduced, so ultimately your noise power will be less and signal power will be high so that's why as you increase the n your signal to quantization noise ratio will be increased so definitely you know you know we want for a better quality we we want that snr is very high so snr is very high means that your signal power you know with reference to noise is basically very high so same is you know if you increase signal to quantization noise ratio that means you are basically having more signal power compared to your quantization noise so this is you know the uh, equation that you need to know only that you just you know multiply this n with 6.02 and just add 1.676 and that kind of db you know it will have the signal to quantization noise ratio now we are talking about you know db scale now let's we you know uh, try a little bit you know uh, more not very much just a little bit more that what we mean by this you know db scale in terms of audio power or or something okay so it will be helpful so so first of all you saw that you know we are talking about you know something like when we are considering you know db scale what we did is 10 log 10 
and then we are saying signal power signal power divided by noise power okay signal power divided by noise power you know there are many ways we can write so this is the signal power divided by noise power so so that means with reference to noise what is our signal strength now things are only not that i mean db scale is not just for this noise purposes basically you can compare uh, you know any things with anything so that means let's say uh, think about like that let's say we, in this example let's say in, in this speaker we have let's say you know p1 power okay p1 watt or something some power and and this speaker you know it is let's say a larger power it has p2 power then let's say we we like to compare their power okay so that means p2 by p1 we just calculate p2 by p1 now if p2 and p1 is the same that means what there is no difference in that in db scale we will say that kind of if it is same we will say that is zero db and exactly you say you see that if your if these things is let's say p2 and is these things is p1 if both are is equal to p that means at that time it will be zero in db scale so in linear scale this ratio if it is one so in db scale it will be zero and how about if you in linear scale let's say your p2 is double than p1 so that means in linear scale it will be 2 and uh, if you just take you know 10 log 10 2 then it will be basically 3 so in db scale it will be 3 okay so now look at this scale let's say this is a linear scale that means uh, here is let's say you know uh, here is exactly uh, let's say this one is let's say this exactly this point what happening this point at this point you see you know this linear scale is one right this is one two three four five and ten this fifteen so at this point it is one so it means p2 divided by p1 is here is one and in this this is a db scale in db scale this is zero now if you go and let's say uh, let's say the ratio linear ratio is two so that means p2 is double than p1 double compared to p1 so at two db scale will be three you see there's a plus three db so we say that if this speaker has double power than this speaker so we say it has three db power so this speaker has three db power compared to this speaker so this is how we you know try to have some sense on db scale okay so similarly you go if this speaker has five times you know uh, power than this speaker then we say in db scale is basically seven point something on the same way how about this one that if this speaker you know has you know half power compared to this one so that means this ratio will be 0 0.5 at 0 0.5 you know perhaps you know at, at, at this at this point so this one and this is minus 3 db so so as you go in the in, in fraction fraction so you'll be going like this one at, at that time it will be your minus in your db scale so minus so zero i mean less than zero and if you go linear scale in this way it will be plus so this is how it works so that means whenever we we use a db scale basically we have a reference point with that reference point what is this we don't need these things right so with that reference point you know we you know consider so in db scale why we need the db scale for example if you're you are considering comparison of thousand times okay let's say if you say that your p2 is basically thousand times p1 and at the time what will be your you know db scale log 10 definitely this would be a thousand right because you know thousand p1 divided by p1 so this was thousand so ultimately it become 10 log to the power 10 10 to the power 3 it become 30 db right you know these things so, so you see even this thousand times in linear scale but in db scale you have only 30 so uh, this kinds of you know in logarithmically if we calculate we get some advantages okay now uh, let's we imagine that you know uh, there are some you know measurement of sound uh, uh, so so that we like to understand that what is the you know measurement is scale the measurement is scale of sound is basically db scale okay db scale now why i explained you know so many things will be clear here i think you are in a busy street okay in a busy street 
definitely you get a lots of noise and sound and if you measure that sound it will be 70 dB okay 70 dB 70 dB 70 dB is basically you know the sound level in a busy street if you are in a you know a very silent room in a very silent room you are basically you know your sound level is basically 20 dB now as you go you know for example loud radio it provides you 80 dB if you are in a stations it gives you you know 90 dB sound and and in, in and this is the way okay now when we are considering db so what is our reference point then now reference point is threshold of hearing you know this is the reference point threshold of hearing and that is basically zero db we say so that's the reference point now reference points mean that's the zero db so you are basically comparing your things with certain things so that it become equal and that's the zero db now how we understand this threshold of hearing that we are considering 0 dB. Now it means that let's say you know you are getting some sound in such a you know quantity that you only can listen. If, if, if you decrease your volume below that you, you, would, you would not listen that anymore. But if you give just in that sound level you just listen. So that's the reference point we say threshold of hearing that means that is the sound level we can just hear okay so compared to that level so you know we are so that is the zero dv now compared to that level we are basically considering other dv okay now in this way if we go forward so that means and if you if you just have you know 160 dv sound level that means you know our human a listening system ear system will be ear drum will be damaged so that's very easy and if you're you know uh, if you go you know around your 120 dv you will feel lots of discomfort okay so this is we understood now let's talk you know briefly that you know how we can make synthetic sound i already told you these things that you know think about like this one this is basically a mathematical you know and geometrical manipulations in this synthetic the very fast methods we say frequency modulation okay for generating synthetic you know sound for example let's say this is cos 2 ist you see this is a, this is simply cosine wave now how about if we just you know increase this harmony so let's say 40 so this will be like this one now how about you know you have you know cos 40 and you pass this thing as an argument of another cosine wave if you look at you know and if you plot it you'll be looking at this one now how about if we do this kind of things you take cos 40 and then you know add twice t and you pass these things as a argument of you know something so this is something like look like this one now how about this this looks like a sound right so in this way you just play around the mathematical manipulations and you can generate certain sound effect but the frequency should be definitely you know 20 hertz to 20 200 uh, 20 kilohertz in between right if we if we go you know less than 20 hertz and if you go you know maybe above 20 kilohertz maybe generally if we go above 20 kilohertz we maybe we don't listen that sound right okay so another very interesting and, and more complex signal generation mechanism might be this one okay so here you know this, this is again it's a mathematical manipulations for example here let's say generally you have a cosine wave and this is the one frequency and within this cosine you basically have another you know cosine form so that means cosine within cosine wave so if you just you know uh, change this you know frequency and this frequency you can generate various kinds of you know sound tone and definitely you need to feed these things to a power amplifier and then uh, to a speaker then you can listen that things so and in this kinds of generation this is the main amplitude and uh, to generate its harmony and some rhythmic we basically control this term so this is how we do that i mean you don't need to you know understand these things more in our multimedia course but this is you know if you someday you need so this is a mathematical you know aspect that how we can generate artificial sound and an other very straightforward technique is you know just you you preserve your sound you know you just you know in a in a in a table okay so that means you you just maintain a you just you just maintain a, a log tables 
and you know that what you mean by this sample for example so you just have play a piano let's say you have a piano and you just you know you store you know you just you know, play this piano and you, you record it and then you convert it to digital sound and then you just you know manipulate that by software you know that 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 table okay so because you know al already you can actually store that information in some in some tabular representation or hardware then in with the software you can edit and manipulate so that's you know uh, the modern days what they do now uh, let's uh, it's also good I mean to to say one words on before you finish this on a musical instrument digital interface you know that is called MIDI and you know MIDI is uh, basically a scripted language and perhaps you 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 are familiar with you know in the MIDI interface if you see the modern day uh, you know sound for example keyboard drum or any other kinds of you know, musical instruments sound instruments you will be seeing there is a MIDI port or, or MIDI interface so it's basically a scripting language so uh, and and you can say this is this somehow you know uh, it basically you know generate and and you know something like this you know typical MIDI connections is like that let's I just explain these things these things little so let's say this is a MIDI keyboard okay now this MIDI keyboard means it has a MIDI interface a MIDI interface means uh, you know it can you know generate you know the information for example so when you play the keyboard it can generate it can record that which note is pressed and at what time this note is pressed and when it is released and the velocity so that means how hard we pressed and even when we release the pressure so you know so this kind of you know, note pitch you know speed you know all of these things you know we, we say event okay we say event so this event data is generated by the MIDI port okay so MIDI basically record that things and keeps track on that and it generates when you play the keyboard now this event data that is a sets of this you know this stuff this you know this this you know, event data goes to a MIDI sequencer now MIDI sequencer basically record this event data and then it can you know reshape reformat or it, it can basically send this then you know recorded data to some other instrument and let's say this instrument also understand this MIDI data and accordingly you know by software you can now play this drum machine so even though you are playing keyboard but you know your software can generate you know this drum machine okay definitely the sound will be drum machine sound but actually the player was playing keyboard so in this way this MIDI once MIDI MIDI sequencer can or one player basically even though he's playing a keyboard he can actually generate you know several instrument either together so so this is the things how MIDI works and there are many programmers that who works on basically on this you know MIDI sequence and MIDI scripting and those things that's very interesting things you can see more that what I said you know these things I took from here in this you know link uh, so you can see you know more on that so this is uh, it uh, now um, you know uh, so 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 you see the quantizations that we do and when this we transform you know when we transmit quantization data over the channel that we say the coding so that means quantization plus transformation of data we say coding so the very simple things that you know when we you know uh, produce the sample output you know the quantized sample output you see quantized sample output for audio audio when we produce that that means when you do the sampling in time domain and we do the samplings in the amplitude domain and then definitely produce you know once you know the, for example maybe at this sample maybe this is you know 8 bits of data this 8 bit of 16 bit of data this is one 16 bit of data so this is a sequence of ones zeros and one zero and now you need to you know encode it that how you you understand this is one how understood this is zero so that called modulation techniques so when you do this this sampling quantization then you produce you know quantized sample output for audio signal that is called pulse code modulation now the difference version of that is called you know differential pulse code modulation and we will see in our you know next uh, you know part and 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 there is adaptive version on that adp same we will not study this one 
and you not you don't need to know these things we just need this quantization concept and maybe this sampling concept quantize sample output you say you know and, and we will see that how dpcm works that to compressed so this is basically how we compressed our data that's called dpcm differential pulse code modulation and perhaps in the next part you know we will start with that things okay this audio compression this you know dpcm stops okay anyway so let's go to the next part